Me Duele podcast episode one. I'm Stuart Anderson, joined with Jake Cook, Spencer Chipping. It's the three of us on here for episode one, where we are going to talk about the history, the purpose, the culture, and why this club exists, as well as some fun details about uh, our own personal lives and why we why we belong to the team, why we ride, how we're friends, and uh, how this whole group got started. Uh, before we dive into that, uh, I wanted to first give a quick shout out to Morton Pedersen. He's a, 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 a member of our team. And if you're, if you're listening to this podcast, there's a, a GoFundMe established for Morton who's in a tricky spot in the hospital. And I'll attach a link to this podcast. So a uh, big shout out to Morton, how strong he is. And, and we give him our best as he had a, a crash uh, recently that's put him in a tough spot. So uh, all, our, all our best to Morton. Uh, kit order is open for the team, so if you're if you're listening to this live or now, uh, we encourage you to go order kits. They're open until December 7th, and then we also have spring camp planned for March 4th through 7th. So I guess what is that like? Team announcements? Is that good? Like new me duele news. Uh, <laughs> so um, before we get before we get into the meat of what we wanted to talk about, um, I want Jake and Spence both to kind of introduce themselves, what they do and how they joined the team. Uh, I wanna know like, at what moment were you like, okay, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna ride with these guys <clears throat> that wear burritos on their backs. Um, <laughs> how about you go first, Chip? Do you wanna talk about how you got involved? Yeah, sure. Well, this is exciting um, and it's good to be a part of this. Looking forward to it. Um, so, um, so I, I, uh, I work with Stuart in the Crown Council and uh, we um, have formed a long time relationship through cycling. And I think uh, we will be touching on things like that, great stories like that, that have uh, created relationships through, um, through racing, riding together, being in the outdoors together. And, and so, um, I have, uh, I've enjoyed that. And, um, from a, from a cycling perspective, join the team. Um, do you know, it has been, uh, 16 years in, in 2004. So, wow, Chip. um, and, and I know that we'll get into some of the, um, other topics as far as that goes throughout today, but, um, I was drawn to the Miduelli cycling team based on some things that um, caught my attention. That was just the dedication to the training, uh, the, um, the daily routines, which uh, attracted me that I could count on, you know, a group ride or preparation for a race on a, on a, on a daily basis. And it became more than um, just going on a ride. These relationships as, as mentioned and, and as will be mentioned throughout the podcast are what uh, tied me to the team um, and generated more curiosity and involvement. And, and like I said, now uh, 16 years later, um, um, excited. Dude, you're an OG. Yeah. You're like OG, like Willie really OG, man. <laughs> right. I, I was I was looking up a ride uh, the other day. I saw my first Lodija was 2010. Um, and, um, you know, and, and at that time, just getting to know some of the bigger races and rides with the older team members. So I know we'll come back Dang, to some more, but yeah. Wow. All right, Jake, how about you? How do you first how maybe talk about what you do how old you are what you do and then just give us a little brief history okay cool okay. no I'm, I'm stoked to be a part of this podcast as uh you know being with Stuart and chip on this it's it's kind of a pleasure to be here um as one of the younger guys on the team you know it's been uh been a pretty eye-opening experience for me and been fun so uh yeah i joined the team back in 2015 um i remember my first interaction with the team was um, you know, as I moved here to holiday, I was kind of searching out some new friends, new community and, you know, happened to be in the same ward with Chip. Um, cool thing. And, uh, and then after that, it kind of just, I, I would see Stu with this, this random guy riding all the time in the neighborhood. And so like, I just kind of, uh, you know, really made me 
you know, question like, Hey, I, who is this guy? And, and, uh, you know, Andy Welch was also in, in the neighborhood. And so he kind of introduced me to this team as well. And, and, uh, also coordinating with Chip at church, you know, just talking and, and, uh, you know, set the invite out. So, uh, yeah, I've ever since 2015, I've kind of just been, a, wanted to join the team and, and, uh, for the last five years now, I've been a part of the team. So, um, professionally I work for Sinclair oil corporation. So manage kind of all their downstream assets in the oil and gas industry. So that's been a, a fun opportunity for me, but, uh, boy, I've enjoyed everything about this team. This team has really been so special to me. And, and, uh, I think that's one of the big qualities about this team is just the culture and the environment. And I'm sure we'll get into that as these podcasts go on, but, uh, man, it's just, it's just a, such a cool vibe that's going on right now, especially as a younger guy, you know, look up all these OGs on the team. It's been so fun to learn from them, but you know, this team is kind of in this transition period where this younger generation is starting to, to kind of, you know, move and, and create this movement. So, um, you know, big things come for 2021 and, and I just excited to be a part of it. Nice. Hey, um, most, most guys that join the Miguel team are introduced a lot like how Jake, how Jake was, where they see the team riding or they know somebody that, that joins. Um, so in 2012, Spencer probably saw me like he's going to deny this, <clears throat> but he probably saw me like 20 times riding. And finally in September, he was like, Hey, I, I ride for this team. You, you should like come and ride with us. And I was like, dude, I mean, I've seen you so many times. And so he took me up Mill Creek, him and Blake Dowdle on like a it, chip. It was like a test. It was like a, a interview. That's right. <laughs> and I was freezing. Oh, I was, it was, you know, Mill Creek in September. So chip gives me a, a jacket, like a, it was like a wind jacket. Yeah. Um, and I put it in my back pocket and Blake had just won loaded Jeff, right. like, He's like the winner. He's like the champ. I have no idea. And so um, I'm riding up and we get to the super steep part on the, on the three bears and the jacket is like dangling out my back pocket and it gets wrapped in the back wheel mm -hmm. on my first freaking interview ride to <laughs> ride for me, Duele. <laughs> and Chip and Blake were like, who is this idiot yeah. that we brought with us? <laughs> And then, dude, that was history. You brought, do you remember bringing a, a kit of yours to my house and yes. dropping it off? Dude, yes. it was it was like the coolest thing I'd ever received. So Chip had this old kit that he brought and he put it on my doorstep. And I don't even know if he had a note with it. It was just like fresh team kit. And I'd never, there it is. I'd never had one before. And I was like, dude, this is going to be, I wore it. I wore it to the top of Haleakala like the next <laughs> month when I rode Maui and I was like, I'm in, man. So um, anyway, a huge part of my life. My wife writes for the team. Um, you know, everything about me, Dwele, is what I believe, you know, it, it are good things in life. That's why I do so much for this squad and all my friends are the members of this team. So it's just the who I associate with and uh, what, what I love about, about it the most. So um, Chip, why don't you, do you want to share just a little bit about maybe how the team started and just give like a brief history to anybody who doesn't know who we are and, and what we do? Yeah, that's really fun. Um, in 1984, um, and for those of you that have been to some of our packet pickups, we had one of the founding members, Marty uh, Jamison, come and speak to us at a packet pickup. He, uh, even raced in the Tour de France. I mean, this guy, the real deal, him and Jim Morgan, who was also long time, uh, believe it or not, uh, the Miguelli accountant. Um, we have, a, it's a, an official organization of the team and he ran the books for um, Miguelli for all the way up actually until Stu and I uh, will get into that in a little while, but Jim and, and Marty in 1984, they, they had a smaller group and the team would meet on 9th and 9th. And the team was actually kind of known as 9th and 9th and they would eat, meet at the barbacoa there and uh, became, they also created the name Midueli. And for those of you that don't know the meaning of Midueli, it's um, I pain, I, I'm willing to suffer. 
and the um, kits were created and there's some real fun uh, kits that will be shown. Maybe Stu will share some of those photos. And that was from, so 1984 to uh, 1993, Chris Peterson um, and Gino Smith entered and started racing uh, seriously. And so that's, that's 10 years that, that went by and, and Chris Peterson and, and Gino, as well as Ken Jones, um, took, over the, took over the team. And when we say take over, it means that they are ordering kits for the team. They're generating, creating group rides for the team. They are um, keeping the group together, so to speak. And there's a, there's a fair amount of work that goes along with that. Um, as Stuart mentioned, um, you know, I had been riding with the team starting in 2004 and in 2012, Stuart and I started riding together. In 2013, Stuart, we, we just said, Stu, you and I will eventually kind of get the, the torch passed, so to speak. Once, once Chris and Gino get tired of ordering these kits and having truck, truck loads of gear in their house and garage and, and managing the details, it's the past, the torch is being passed. And so um, Stuart gracefully said, uh, I'm, I'm all in. And um, so that was in, that was in 2013 to current. Um, that's you mean, the history. You mean when the, I just started, yeah. when I started creating like social media accounts for the team without the team manager knowing? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> so over time, you know, those things, those things are, are um, created by new ideas and passed on from, from those members. And I, I just want to make mention that uh, Ken Jones, Chris Peterson, Jim Morgan still ride with the team today. Um, yeah. Mar and Marty still came to a pack of pickups. So it goes from 1984 to 2020 of these team members being involved. Nice. Hey, no, no, Chip, no, Chip, is it, I mean, as, as a new person coming in, I remember, is it me duly or is it me dwelling? Right. <laughs> I mean, I think, I think most people get confused. And so like, well. let's, let's clarify for the team. Cause we've had a Good lot point. of new people join. Good so point. Good is point. it me duele or is it me duly? A. Now, um, <laughs> the, the reason why it's okay to say either or is because an Italian, the Italian proper way to say this is duele. Okay. And if you ever go, um, to <laughs> a place it's kind of like it's kind of like the bowler thing is it bowler or vol or volet I mean, oh, it's, it's kind of the same also thing right? volet. <laughs> also volet. the beauty the beauty of cycling is that it is um you know we have a lot of different um languages and uh, you know ethnicity inside of cycling and therefore um we we do our best to pronounce it right so, sure. Miduele, Miduele, and, Miduele. And, and you know, and you know what? I don't. I'd also admit too. I think, you know, mm -hmm. past years riding Lodija, I mean, we've been kind of known as like Team Barbacoa, right? And so I yeah. think, yeah, great. I point. think since I will say as a as a young person, as Stu and Chip have have taken this transition team on, you know, they've really, it's really taken it from Team Barbacoa to Team Miduele, and yeah. I think that's kind of the transformation that's taken place, which has been. You know really cool so you guys ride for a burrito company <laughs> i yeah. can't tell you how many times i've gotten that at loaded in my three years yeah, of, burritos. of writing you guys like burritos <laughs> <laughs> so you know if if i can just the history there is is special and i'm just i'll hold this up oh boy. so the the reason I, why this this kit and and our colors were blue and yellow but for those of you that have been eating at barbacoa for, for 20 years, barbacoa was blue and yellow. Their logo has, has changed over the years, but our kit as barbacoa has been a primary sponsor started yeah. as their same colors. And by the time Stuart and I were designing kits, we were like this blue and gold is the worst looking 
<laughs> and no offense to the history, but it just was time for a change. And Gino accidentally got back um, a design that we had done that showcased it in black. And finally was like, wow, black yes. looks wow. okay. Stuart and I have been like, you know, black and red is how it should, the only red that we have had on here has been from the red in, <laughs> in our former logo. And that, we, is so, that is so brutal looking, Chip. I just can't even right. look at that. <laughs> well, so I would, I mean, black and red is something that we always pushed. And, and this was the introduction to red was a company that nice. um, I had sponsoring the team. And, <laughs> and so that has evolved into, into the black and, and red. But we have maintained the yellow because of the barbacoa flame and, and sponsorship. Excellent. Excellent explanation there. Um, there is one thing I want Jake to talk about for one sec, which is um, in our in the company that I'm part of with Chip, a lot of what we do is we train dental teams how to have amazing culture. So a, a dental team has to be successful with the culture inside the practice. But this team has like an incredible culture. Like, what is it known for? What is like if you're going to join this team, you know, there's kind of like a culture that is known where a guy's like, okay, I'm going to, I think I'm going to do it. I'm going to, I'm going to join knowing what Jake, what is this like to you? What does the team stand for? You know, that is, dude, that is, I mean, that is what the team, I mean, that, that question is, is I think is, is the question to ask because I think what, what, the team is, is that culture. I mean, for example, we, the recently in the last couple of months, we've had a few people join, but they've, there'd be people that have been looking at the team over the last couple of years and just kind of been, you know, they've joined maybe on some outside rides with us, not necessarily part of the team, but just kind of seen us up and down the canyons and stuff. And all of a sudden they're like, I think it's time for me to dive in. And cause I think they see that brotherhood. They see that huge, massive group that we represent and that's what Meduli is. It's a, it's a real brotherhood. It's a real, you know, group that has, you know, old, young, I mean, all different ages, colors, everything. And, and I think for me, that's what Meduli is. It, it incorporates everybody. It's this environment, this culture. And, you know, I mean, I could be riding with Dave Sharp. I mean, he's, you know, in his late fifties, maybe sixties. I'm not sure it's quite his age, but here I am 31. I mean, he's there's a 30 year gap. Dave Sharp's actually 85 years old. <laughs> <laughs> but then you ride with like Chris Peterson, right? Or you ride with the younger guys like, you know, maybe Jason Cook or Matt Ryder. I mean, they're just different, they're different age groups, different age gaps. And we all come from different backgrounds. And I think that's really what Meduli is. It's, it incorporates everybody. We invite everybody. And the culture is just something. It's, it's hard to really put into words, to be honest with you, the culture. Yeah. Well, it's interesting. When I, when I was joining, uh, I pick on Dave because... Dave was like the, he is the epitome of this team. I mean, he is Amen. always the strongest. Uh, he's absolutely a winner in every way, but in no way is he out to prove to anyone, you know, no. he, he is like the most welcoming teammate mentor in every way. I mean, he taught me how to suffer. And that is what it, to me, Amen. this team is all about is just like the dudes that go up. Like that's it. Just we're going, we're going up. Ed Chawner's doing twelve thousand vert today, and it's going to be like a Tuesday. It's like no. I mean, I mean, yeah, like Dave Sharp, <laughs> and he does the PC loop on a Tuesday or Pine Canyon loop on a Tuesday. I mean, yeah. what is that? I mean, yeah. that's just it's crazy. Yeah, it's awesome. Mm -hmm. Chip, how about you? What do you think this team stands for? I mean, what what do you see when you see what what this group is all about? Um. <clears throat> So those that you have mentioned are, have been longtime mentors and have had the opportunity to ride with, with each of those guys. Um, Chris Peterson, Ed Chawner, true mentors to me. Gino, um, a true mentor to me. And what I started to feel was um, cycling and time spent with this group um, meant something more to me. And this is what it meant. 
uh, this is this can relate to today's pandemic. It can relate to um, a bad day at work. It can relate to uh, just trials, difficulties that you have going on in life. But no matter what I had going on that day, mm. as long as I got that morning ride in with that group, not only being able to share, um, you know, emotionally what was going on, but to physically have that rush of, of accomplishment in the morning of peaking over that climb and the sunrise coming up, I could handle what was going to take place that day at work, personal life. Good point, Chip. And, um, nice. That is, so for over 15 years, that's how I have started my day. So Midweli to me is the start of a new day. Uh, mm. every day. So nice. Yeah. I love that. We, uh, we recently tried to, um, kind of capsulize what it means to be, to be part of the team for somebody that, um, maybe doesn't know who we are or what we do. And I wanted to read a little, uh, if that's okay, I'm just going to read, uh, this is right off our little website. Uh, it says the colors of this team stand for something bigger than yourself. When you wear the Miduele colors, you represent all and the pride of the team built over 35 years. The jersey represents leadership, teamwork, courage, strength, someone who pushes you and a willingness to suffer. All things that make a great cyclist, teammate, and friend. Midwelly team members treat each other and all other clubs with respect. Your conduct on and off the bike should revolve around respect. Respect for the sport, for each other, respect for other teams and riders, respect for our sponsors and the rules of the road and respect for the events in which we participate. Being part of Miduele means you're part of a team, a mentorship and a friendship. So it's, uh, it, it is, it, I think that, um, I think when we took over just kind of managing and running the team, Spence, we were so excited to like get our hands on um, designing the kits and, and being part with like, uh, the, the fun aspects of communicating with the team, Un, unbeknownst to me, the, the bigger picture of how special it is to be connected to so many more incredible athletes and people inside this community. Like it really is an amazing thing to be part of. So it, I, for one, am just super grateful to be able to kind of launch this podcast, launch whatever it becomes uh, as we talk about probably just absolutely idiotic things. Uh, it's going to get good. I can't wait for <laughs> But I mean, as we, I think as we kind of wrap up, um, what, what, uh, what else? I, I don't want to leave anything out here at, for creation and history and why we ride and who we are. That's kind of the history of what we want to do in this first, in this first episode. What else you got up your sleeve, Chip? You know, I do have some, something else <laughs> up my sleeve. And that is the, the, the thing about, the, the team is who it is and because of the members. The members of Midwelly is what makes Midwelly. Now, a team cannot be a team unless you have those that are involved in the team. They're not only showing up physically, but from a financial standpoint, um, the sponsors of the Midwelly team come from the businesses within the Midwelly uh, group as well. And that's really something to recognize. So as, as I hold up, you know, our, our, our newest kit and I, and I look at the, at the branding, um, across here, I just, I, I would add to the, I would add to it, Stu, that the, it is so cool to be, uh, almost self-supported and sponsored by our own team members, some do it without even putting a logo onto the kit, just out of the appreciation for what the team means to them. And, um, but that's, it's pretty powerful that we perpetuate it together as a group in keeping the team healthy from that standpoint. And that's very cool. Very cool. Um, anything else, Jake, any other thoughts here on mission, purpose, history? culture anything that makes the team who we are you know i kind of want to speak to that you know 
the newcomers that have just joined the team and maybe even some people that have been on the team for, you know, a couple of years. Um, you know, if you, if you have friends that are, you know, looking for, you know, a place for, of comfort, a place of fam, a family in a sense, a place of, of, of enjoyment, a, pa a place of peace, you know, I, I in, send them the invite of joining me duly. I mean, this, this community that we're, this team that we're a part of is something very, very special. And I don't think people really realize that until they actually come on a few rides with us and really experience the type of members that are a part of this team. And so, you know, if you're, have ever, have ever, have ever, have ever, have ever had any doubts of maybe, you know, Hey, maybe I should shoot a, you know, an invite to one of these, my friend to come ride with us, you know, get rid of that doubt and invite them, invite them to come out and, and come participate with us and come on a few rides and really see what this is all about. I mean, we're, we're looking for, you know, anybody to really, that will bring a good taste into this, uh, you know, this team. And so, you know, if you're, if you're worried, don't be worried, invite them, have them come out. And, uh, you know, that's what I've done with multiple, with a bunch of my friends. And, you know, if we've had a huge success with many other people too, inviting people. So, um, you know, seek out those people that are really, you know, wanting a place and purpose. And, you know, I think Midway will find that. I know this team is true. And I know that if I just kidding, I'm not, no. <laughs> <laughs> we need more people. We want members. We love people. It is, uh, it is fun to kind of highlight, uh, and I'll do, I'll do one today. Um, we, we have had, uh, barbacoa has been a huge part of who this team is and all of our thanks go to them as a sponsor, um, man, without them and, and kind of the start uh, that, that they gave us, we host all of our team, you know, kit pickups there for years. They sponsor our food and like, like, uh, Spence showed that logo has been on the back of this Jersey for, you know, 20 years. Um, so huge thanks to our sponsors as we highlight, uh, barbacoa today. So. Uh, I think that wraps up episode one, kind of mission and purpose of this squad. We're going to come back with episode two, where we're going to talk about um, something that we developed last year. It's called our yellow jersey. So stay tuned for yellow two as we talk about uh, who wears the yellow jersey and why. So uh, can't wait. All right, dudes.